Before the date you're planning to install Toast, it's important to make sure your location meets all site requirements. These videos will cover all necessary site requirements to ensure a smooth and seamless installation with Toast on a Toast managed network. We'll start by going over your Toast network and how internet connection will be established and run throughout your restaurant. We'll then learn about the cables used to run Ethernet as well as the cables used to power your devices. After that, we'll cover all physical modifications that will be required before your install day, such as wall mounting and countertops. Finally, we'll go over wireless connectivity if you're using Toast Go handhelds. If you're working with an IT person or contractor to install your Toast hardware, we recommend that they also watch these videos. Please note that some Toast customers rely on their own IT departments or partner with a managed service provider for the support, service, and management of their network infrastructure. If you fall under this category of a self-managed network, this video does not apply to your installation. Please reach out to your own IT department or managed service provider for assistance. In order to successfully install Toast at your location, you'll need to have broadband internet service set up through an internet service provider, or ISP. Your ISP will provide you with a modem, which is required to set up your internet service. The modem is a device that will bring internet service into your building through a coax cable connection. A router then distributes the internet to the many devices in your building. Toast will provide you with a Toast router, specifically a Cisco Meraki router. This is required to run Toast and will ensure all of your devices are synced on the same network. The Meraki router will need to be plugged into the modem from your ISP, so make sure you have at least one open Ethernet port that can be used for Toast. The Toast router is intended for Toast hardware access only. Do not plug any non-Toast approved devices into your Toast router as this does not comply with the payment card industry data security standard. This means that no personal devices, for example, personal cell phones, laptops, TVs, speakers, or other non-Toast devices may be plugged into your Toast router. You may need to purchase an additional router or access point if you need to run any non-Toast devices. The Toast provided Meraki router can support Ethernet connection via either DHCP or static. The device defaults to DHCP, but if necessary, can be assigned to a static IP. Please confirm with your ISP whether DHCP or static is utilized and let your onboarding consultant know so they can best prepare for the install. It's also important to test your network speed to ensure it meets Toast's minimum speed requirements. In order for Toast to successfully run on your network, you'll need a minimum download speed of 15 megabytes per second and a minimum upload speed of 5 megabytes per second. Now that you have a basic understanding of Toast's internet requirements, let's go over the cables that will be used to connect your devices to your network and the cables used to provide them power. With the exception of Toast Go handhelds, all Toast devices will connect to your network through Ethernet cables, specifically CAT5e or CAT6 cables. Using these cables will allow for higher processing speeds that are required to run Toast. Each device in your restaurant will need to have its own Ethernet connection running directly to your Toast router. This is called a network home run, which basically means each device has its own dedicated cable running back to its destination without interruption. This is often done by having the Ethernet cables run from the router, through the walls of the restaurant, directly to an Ethernet outlet installed near each device, although you're not required to run cables through the walls this way. If you do wish to run cables this way, you can then use one of the shorter Ethernet cables that came with each device 
to connect it to the Ethernet outlet. Each device will come with a 3 foot and 7 foot cable, but if you think you'll need longer Ethernet cables, you can purchase your own. Just make sure they're either the CAT5E or CAT6 cables discussed earlier in the video. If you're using the cables that came with the TOS hardware, each hardwired device will need at least one open Ethernet outlet within 7 feet of where you'll physically place each device. This includes all POS stations, kitchen display screens, wireless access points, impact kitchen printers, all other standalone printers, and kiosks. Please note, you'll only need one outlet for a POS station that has a receipt printer attached, since these share a network connection. Again, prior to your install day, your location must be properly cabled with network home runs from your Toast router to each of the final locations of your Toast devices. All devices must be connected back to the Toast router, which will then connect back to your ISP's modem. This ensures that all of your Toast devices can communicate on the same network and can receive internet service from your ISP. In some cases, your location may have so many devices that there will not be enough open ports on the Toast router to plug all of your cables into. If this is the case, you can use a network switch, which will provide you with more Ethernet ports to connect your devices to. Your onboarding consultant can help determine which switch is right for your setup, and can update your order to include this switch. You can also purchase another one in the future through Toast Shop. Please note, the Toast network switch is intended for Toast hardware access only. As discussed earlier for the Toast router, do not plug any personal or non-Toast approved devices into your Toast network switch, as this does not comply with the payment card industry data security standard. To ensure you're able to keep track of which device each cable is running to, we recommend labeling each cable. On the label, it can be helpful to include both the device and service area the cable is running to. For this, you can use letters for each service area, and numbers for each device. It's also important to confirm that the locations where you plan to install TOAST devices will have available power. Make sure that there's at least one open electrical outlet within 6 feet of where you'll place each device. If you feel your location does not meet these requirements, please reach out to your local contractor or IT consultant for support on ensuring these things are taken care of before your scheduled install date. Remember, Toast is not responsible for running cables or making sure your location is ready for install. Toast requires that all wall mounts for kitchen display screens and ceiling mounts for wireless access points must be installed prior to installation. If you've purchased a kitchen display screen, a wall mount will be included that you'll need to install. You can also purchase and install any other wall mounts that meet the VESA standards. To learn more about these standards, view the Toast Central article. Please note that Toast does not provide mounting services. If you plan on cutting holes in your countertops to run terminal cables underneath your counters, this must be done prior to your install day. These optional countertop holes should be 2-3 to three inches and located within 2 feet of the location of each terminal. Your restaurant should also not be in active construction during installation. Your building must have power to complete installation. For more information about what is considered active construction, please view the Site Readiness Guide on Toast Central.